today I'm going to be talking about what attributes make a good photo and I'm talking in terms of landscape photography uh, but most of the points can actually be applied to any type of to, uh, photography. Now the givens and these are the technical points a, a good photo will be correctly exposed and I'm going to be doing another video on the exposure triangle in future so watch out for that one. Um, another technical thing is that a good photo will generally be in focus. Now for landscapes this will generally mean involving using an aperture of f8 to f22 so that you get a large depth of field which means that more of the photo is, is in acceptably sharp focus. This is the point that could be different for other genres such as portraits where you would normally prefer to use a shallow depth of field maybe using f2.8 so you can burr the black ground. Now the, the next thing to think about is where to focus in the frame and for landscape photography the answer is the hyperfocal distance which is quite a complex calculation but in essence it means focusing on a point approximately one third into the frame to give you the maximum amount of your image in acceptably sharp focus gives you the maximum depth of field um, another given is that for landscapes the photos should be sharp generally that means you'll be using a tripod and you're following all of the other suggestions for taking a sharp photo and I'm also planning to do another video on the steps to follow to get a sharp photo and the final technical point is to keep your horizon level now all your landscape photos should follow the points mentioned just now but I'm now going to be talking about the more interesting which are the more artistic and less technical considerations. So, what makes one photo better than others? I suppose the main thing is that you like it, irrespective of what others might say. Um, another, another thing is that it either makes use of the rules of composition or you deliberately choose to break those rules and we'll be going into the rules of composition in, in, a, in a short while in this video. As a beginner you should try to follow the rules of composition and then once you're familiar with using them decide artistically when to break those rules for an artistic effect. Another thing that makes one photo better than others is that other people like it and another one is it's better than your other photos in your opinion and it's better than your other photos in other opinions and I suppose the final thing is people want to buy it either as a digital image or as a print now we'll go into the, the more detailed explanations for some of these points now so light makes a huge difference in landscape photography and generally the best times to shoot for landscape are sunrise, sunset, the golden hour which is the hour before sunset or the hour after sunrise and the blue hour which is the hour before sunrise or the hour after sunset. The reason for these best times is that the sun is low in the sky and it gives a great texture to landscapes uh, another bonus is that the colours and textures in the sky at these times can be awesome and can dramatically increase the interest in your photos. Clouds, when lit from a low angle, can be absolutely spectacular. So if you're shooting at midday, which obviously is not in one of those best times for landscapes, or at other times when the light is harsh, you really should consider black and white photos because they can be very effective in harsh light. You've got very um, bold shadows and contrasting highlights. Now you need to understand the rules of composition 
And actually, you should see these as guidelines rather than rules, because you can deliberately choose to break them for artistic effect. So the basic rules of composition include the rule of thirds, which is probably the best known of the rules of composition, leading lines, which are used to draw the viewer's eye into the main subject of your photo, and I like to refer to this as the hero of the image, repeating patterns, triangles, reflections, silhouettes, foreground, midground and background separate, uh, which gives depth to the photo, because obviously it's a 2D image representing a 3D view, symmetry and framing. Now I'm going to go into examples of all those rules of composition using example photographs uh, later in this video, so you should, you should be able to understand what we mean by all those things. But for landscape photography, traditionally, um, photographers use wide-angle lenses uh, to get as much of the vista in the scene as possible. Now whilst this is good, particularly if you have foreground interest, you should also consider using a longer lens, such as a, uh, a 70 to 200 millimeter, and pick out just one element of the scene. This is what can make a photo different from the rest. Because most landscape photographers will use a wide angle lens, if you're shooting a well-known scene, it's very likely that your photo will get similar results as other photographers. Another useful thing to do is edge patrol, which is looking around the edge of your composition so that you can choose to eliminate any distracting objects typically at the edge of your image. What you leave out of the frame is just as important as what you decide to include. Uh, another tip I would have is to simplify the image as much as possible. Um, another point is to use contrast, and this could be contrasting colours, contrasting tones, or an unusual juxtaposition. Um, a final tip is don't fall into the trap of comparing your work to others. Especially when you're a beginner, this can be very disheartening. Much better is to compare your photos with others that you took in the past. Because when you do this, you'll see how much you're improving, and this should help you to motivate and continue to learn. Now we're now going to look at some example photographs using the rules of composition that I mentioned earlier. The first photo um, is an example of a photo that uses the rule of thirds and leading lines. So you'll notice that in this photo, the horizon is on the top thirds line, and the tree is on the intersection of the top and left third lines. This um, rule of thirds makes your photo more dynamic than having the subject in the center of your photo, which is what most beginners or people just taking snaps would do. And besides making use of the rule of thirds, this photo also uses a leading line which is the road leading the viewer's eye from the bottom left of the photo to the main subject, which is the tree on the horizon. And the next photo is an example of repeating patterns. So you'll notice the repeating patterns are formed by the boats in the foreground and the bricks in the Knaresborough viaduct. And if you could see the top of the photo, you would notice that there were also some turrets on the, um, on the top of the viaduct. The next photo is an example of leading lines and framing. So you'll notice the leading lines are formed by the, the path leading up to the steps near the, near the bridge. And the framing is formed by what you can see through the archway of the bridge on the right hand side and also on the left hand side. Now the next photo, this shows a very effective uh, photo uh, because of the simple composition. 
It's also an example when I used edge patrol to eliminate distracting objects which were near the bottom edge of my photo. And another feature of this particular photo is the use of triangles. In, fa in fact, in this photo you can see three triangles. One is formed by the V-shape of the trunk and the top branch of the tree. Another is formed by the trunk and its reflection in the river. And then another by the reflection of the first V in the river. So you have three triangles in that photo. And the simplification was helped by the conditions in this example because the mistiness in the atmosphere has helped to soften the background. And my tip is to use fog and mist for woodland photography because this adds an ethereal effect and can simplify what would otherwise be very busy backgrounds. Now, photos that I like. My favourite photo actually is the one that we've just examined which has the triangles and the mist in the background. Um, I sold a print of that to somebody in Alaska who also liked it when they, when they saw my post on social media with that photograph. And then we'll move on to photos that other people like. Now the two most popular photos that I have posted on social media, and this is measured by the number of likes they've had, are the next two photos. And each of these has had more than 800 likes on various Facebook groups. The first photo is an example which uses leading lines, which you can see from the, the driveway, reflections, which you can see by the reflections of the sunset in the ice. It uses the rule of thirds as the horizon is placed on the top thirds line and the, the tree is on the left thirds. And it also uses contrasting tones, so you have the warm tones of the sunset and the very cool tones of the foreground. And the, the next photo is another one which has an example of leading lines, which is formed by the river and its banks. And it has reflections. It makes use of the rule of thirds, which is uh, where the, the viaduct, uh, the top of the viaduct is along the top third line. And this one also has contrasting tones, but the opposite way around from the other one, because this one has cool tones in the highlights of the sky and warmer tones in, in the foreground and mid-ground. and mid -ground. Now, one thing which all of the photos have in common, in fact, all but one, the only one that doesn't have this in common is the one that shows repeating patterns. But all the other photos that I've given examples of here have a secret source, and this is what I believe makes a good photo, and certainly one that's a lot better than others. And the secret source is something I know I call composition stacking. So what do I mean by composition stacking? It's making use of many of the rules of composition in one image. So you'll notice the one the photos above that we've just discussed make use of more than just the one rule of composition and certainly the ones that I like the best and the ones that other people like the best tend to follow this pattern. So the secret source is composition stacking, making use of more than just one rule of composition in a photo. So I hope you found this um, useful and helpful and it would really help me if you would subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And if you like the video, please hit the thumbs up button to show that you like it. Okay, over and out, and thank you very much for being part of this video.